Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the Bezite Fall update and this one is massive. It brings new support for handheld gaming devices like the ROG Ally X and Legion Go 2, improves the desktop experience with Fedora 43, GNOME 49 and KDE Plasma 6.5 and even adds support for racing wheels. If you're new around here, Bezite is a Linux distribution focused on gaming, built on top of Fedora, and it just keeps getting better with every update. So let's go through everything that's new, explained in simple terms, so even if you're just getting into Linux gaming, you'll understand exactly what's going on. But before you jump in, if you enjoy Linux gaming content, distro reviews and performance tests, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. It only takes a second, but it helps the channel grow and keeps you up to date with all the cool stuff happening in the Linux world. Let's start with the big headline. The Asus ROG Ally and the newer Ally X now have full support on Bazite. What does that actually mean? Well, it's not just that they boot or run games. Bazite now fully handles all the hardware features these handhelds come with. We're talking RGB lighting control, custom fan curves, back button mapping, proper sleep support, and a tuned amplifier driver for those amazing new speakers. In fact, Bazai developers worked directly with AMD to fix some of the issues with sleep mode. That's impressive, because the Ally uses a very similar chip to the Steam Deck, and getting that working correctly wasn't an easy task. Now, if you have the Ally X, keep in mind one small detail. It uses a more powerful dual amplifier speaker system and some users have reported sound distortion when pushing the volume above 80%. Until the developers hear back from Texas Instruments, the company that made the amplifiers, it's recommended to keep your volume below that level. Even at 80%, it's still incredibly loud. This kind of attention to detail is what makes Bazite stand out. It's not just slapping Linux on a handheld. It's about making the entire experience polished and functional, just like on Windows, but open source and community driven. Next up, the Lenovo Legion Go 2. Bazite now supports this device much better than before. The team fixed sleep mode, improved controller support, and added dual gyro functionality. That means both controllers now handle motion and input correctly. There are still a couple of things missing though. HDR PQ support isn't ready yet, you'll only get basic Gamma 22 HDR, which works fine but won't satisfy those who want the full HDR experience. And the two new buttons below the D-pad still don't function yet. Everything else from the original Legion Go carries over, so it's already in a good place for daily use. If you own a Legion Go 2 and want to try Bazite, this update makes it one of the most stable Linux options for that handheld right now. Bazite also adds support for the One X Player X1 Air, another popular handheld PC. This one is based on Intel hardware, so it's a bit different from the AMD devices. Bazite now supports its RGB lighting and control input, so you can enjoy the same colorful experience as on Windows. There is one limitation for now, since it's Intel based TDP controller, that's how much power the CPU uses, isn't fully supported. You'll only get two power profiles, 15 watts and 25 watts, and you can switch between them by pressing the turbo button on the device. Even so, this is a great start and the devs said they plan to improve it later. So it's definitely worth trying out if you own the X1 Air. Now here is something desktop users will love. Bazite has been upgraded to Fedora 43 base, which means you're getting all the newest Linux improvements under the hood. Along with that, it includes the very latest desktop environments, GNOME 49 and KDE Plasma 6.5. GNOME 49 brings more polish, smoother animations and better performance overall, especially on hybrid devices or laptops. Meanwhile, KDE Plasma 6.5 continues refining its new Wayland session, improving multi-monitor support and fixing little things that make the experience feel seamless. So whether you're using Bazite on a handheld, a desktop PC or a laptop, this upgrade means better stability, better performance and more modern software. 
Next up is the bazaar, Bazite's Software Center. It's received a complete refresh in this update. Here is what's new. Better memory efficiency, faster performance, a redesigned flat hub page, and cleaner sidebars and smoother navigation. The overall experience now feels more polished. Browsing apps, installing games, or just checking updates is snappier and more visually appealing. It's not just a back-end update, you can actually feel the difference when using it. This is one of the coolest parts of the update if you're into sim racing. Bazite has added a bunch of new steering wheel drivers, making it easier than ever to plug in your racing setup and just play. The new supported models include Trustmaster, Logitech and Fanatec. And it gets even better, you can use the Oversteer app available right inside Bazaar to customize your wheel settings, tweak force feedback and create profiles for different games. This turns Bazite into a genuinely great Linux option for racing enthusiasts, whether you play Assetto Corsa, F124 or any other sim racer. With all these improvements, a few older things are being removed to keep Bazite lean and modern. The special versions made for Asus and Microsoft Surface devices are being discontinued. Now that these devices work fine with the main Bazite images, maintaining separate builds doesn't make sense anymore. If you're an ASUS user, you'll lose the ASUS CTL app that controls fan curves and performance modes. But don't worry, RGB brightness and power control still work on the main images. If your device is missing a specific feature, the team encourages you to report it so they can add support directly to the handheld daemon system. This tool used to help reduce input latency in games, but it no longer works with the latest Vulkan updates. Since AMD's anti-lag feature now does the same job, latency flex has been removed. If you manually added launch options related to latency flex in your games, it's best to remove them to avoid any issues. Lastly, the wallpaper engine plugin for KDE has been removed because it was causing too many crashes. It might come back in a more stable form later, but for now it's gone to keep the system reliable. And that's everything in the Bazite full update. A smoother experience, better hardware support, new features for gamers, and overall cleaner system. If you use handheld PCs or just love tinkering with Linux gaming setups, this is an update you'll definitely want to install. Bazite continues to prove it's one of the most polished Linux gaming distributions out there right now. Once again, if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss my next Linux video. Thanks so much for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.